we want to start today with the state of the state speech and try to extrapolate from there what the next four years is going to be like. Our guest is the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter. Assemblywoman, good to see you again. Welcome back to Roundtable. Good to see you, David. Thank you. So I wonder what you thought of the governor's uh, state of the state speech. So, uh, David, the state of the state speech uh, happened on our swearing in day, which was my sixth term. So, of course, I had some excitement uh, just from that alone. Uh, we've had a challenging uh, couple of years with the pandemic. Uh, the governor did a great job on highlighting all the work that we've done in review, as well as looking forward to what we're going to do this term. Um, I was excited to hear components about the work we did on access to vaccinations, access to testing, and continuing to grow in that space. Also, uh, looking at a lot of the uh, bills we've done to increase minimum wage, to become fourth in the nation for uh, our economy, where when I entered the legislature in 2012 under a Christie administration, we were in the bottom tier uh, during a historic, historic downturn in the economy, making a full pension payment this year, um, exciting times for what is the future of New Jersey. Uh, as the Legislative Black Caucus, we're going to continue to double down in the kitchen table conversations about making sure we keep people in their housing, uh, making sure that we address the wealth disparities gap, which we have statistics on that, and really doubling down in the space to make sure that our uh, black and brown communities can thrive in New Jersey as well, and we're not left behind. Let's talk about that a little bit. There's been a lot of talk uh, around trends since Election Day about affordability and these so-called kitchen table issues, which makes me wonder, just as Kenny, you mentioned, you know, community college tuition, minimum wage, daycare, women's health care funding. I mean, if that's not table, uh, kitchen table issues, I'm not sure uh, what is, but then it makes me wonder if the people who say that, that we should focus on kitchen table issues and affordability, aren't really just saying, hey, police reforms, civilian complaint review boards, reparations, et cetera. Those are back burner issues now. What do you, what do you say to that? So uh, what I say to that is uh, these issues have always been prevalent and top of mind presence, especially for the Legislative Black Caucus. I have the privilege of sharing as chair of a caucus that spans from Cape May County all the way to Hudson County. So we cover New Jersey's most vulnerable populations across the state in pockets of the state. When we talk about a reparations task force, which I'm excited, New Jersey has a history steeped in uh, redlining and oppressive behaviors, over-policing, and we have the data to support it. The work doesn't stop no matter what year it is, unfortunately, because we're talking about 400 years in counting. We're also talking about making gains and allowing people to own property, especially uh, black and brown people uh, who have been locked out from uh, uh, affordable loans, uh, from access to neighborhoods of their choice, from access to schools of their choice. So our work doesn't change as a legislative Black caucus. In fact, we're more intentional and dogmatic in our approach today more so than ever. So I'm excited about the work uh, to go forward. And it's going to be our job to raise those issues at every table we sit at. There was some tension in the process of uh, selecting a new Senate president, Nia Gill and Ron Rice, members of, of the caucus, making a statement about representation. Is that something that gets discussed in the caucus before it happens, putting Nia Gill up as a Senate president candidate? They followed their process on being able to elect a member of their peers to serve as leadership. So that right is bestowed upon every one of us who's elected to select a leader of our peers. But just remember, uh, even though she, uh, Senator Gill may not be the Senate president, Senator Scatari is, uh, please know that we still will have our voice heard at the table. We will elevate the issues of priority. And by no means uh, can you ever silence the voices of a Ron Rice or a Senator Nia Gill or any member uh, of the Black Caucus or the legislature. 
Does Governor Murphy have a, a, a special commitment to black voters who by far were the most loyal Democrats uh, for him at election time twice? So, so David, it's my hope um, that uh, the relationship we've established with Governor Murphy uh, has been sincere. The work that we've committed to doing has been sincere. I've been in the legislature since 2012, prior to Governor Murphy coming into office. So the work that we've accomplished uh, just under a four-year term, turning our economy around, focused on Black maternal health, uh, where there's a three-time loss of life for a Black woman delivering a baby versus a non-Black woman in the state of New Jersey, criminal justice reforms, juvenile justice reforms, putting, um, actually implementing minimum wage that included tip workers, all things I had actually worked on prior to the governor coming into office, Governor Murphy, but yet we got done. So it's important to me, and I say this often, that leadership matters, having a heart for service matters, having a speaker, a Senate president, and a governor who cares about all of New Jerseyans, but a special care to the folks who have been oppressed by oppressive systemic policies rooted, rooted in a history of slavery, rooted in a history of oppression are now overturned so that we also can thrive and continue to be contributors to our great state. Is there one bill that you could say is a uh, priority of your caucus? There's a couple of bills that are priorities for our caucus going forward. We want to make sure that people stay in their homes. Housing security is critical, and it also helps to build wealth. The Civilian uh, Review Board is important to us. We are working hard on that bill, and the Reparations Task Force are three that I am uplifting uh, that we want to make sure we study with thought leaders from across our state, New Jersey's history and role in slavery. So we have a document, one, to, to detail in one place what New Jersey's role has been so people can look back and know that story. And also we can really be prescriptive in our policy actions to right some of the systemic and structural harms that we're still working on today. All right, Assembly Member Siobhan the Sumter. She's the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. Good to see you again, Assemblywoman. Thank Thanks you. for coming on with us.